In this section, we're going to edit the file that we have just downloaded from the Hothouse Design website. To edit the document, we need to use Microsoft Word. File, open. The file we downloaded went into the Downloads folder. Downloads, and it was named N7 Review. So we can scroll down. N7Review.RTF, rich text format. So here's the file. Several steps we need to follow. First, set the page size. Click on Layout. Size is A4. It's already A4. Orientation needs to be portrait. And the margins, top and bottom need to be four centimeters left and right one centimeter now come the header and footer if we click document elements header do a basic header that will apply to all pages name goes left aligned Candidate number is right aligned. And then in the footer, so I click footer, again a basic footer that applies to all pages. Left aligned comes the page number. <coughs> so we click page number, alignment left. OK and center number right aligned so center number goes here all alignments match the margin settings that means this right aligned uh, footer is one centimeter from the page edge so that's fine the left left hand side is also fine headers and footers are displayed on each page yes we can see they are Format the entire document into two columns of equal width. If we go back to the layout and to return to the main text of the document, you can double click somewhere in the document. Columns, we want two columns, and then to edit the separation between the columns, again click on columns, columns. And here we can edit the spacing. So 5 millimeters, we can type 5 mm. OK. Next, we want to apply certain settings to all of the text. So to select everything, we can com press Command A to select all. That's again. All text must be sans serif font. So click Home font. Again, sans serif. sans serif is not the name of a font, it is a font type. Arial is a good sans serif font to use. We want a 1.5 line spacing. Here we can right click, making sure everything is still selected. Paragraph, line spacing, 1.5 lines. Okay. All text needs to be fully justified, so justification, full justification, justify text. All text needs to be 11 point font size. Okay, now we need a page break before the first paragraph, so there's going to be a blank page before this paragraph starts, and that's only going to be a single column. So in order to do that, I'm going to insert not just a page break, but a section break going to the next page, because the different sections can have different numbers of columns. So insert section break. We can see the second page is still two columns. The first page is two columns, but I can click Layout and change this first page to one column, while the second page is still two columns.
Now we need to make this the title page. It needs to be center aligned. 48 points, so if we click on the left hand side of this line, we can select the line. 48 points and underlined. After this comes a subheading, a new line. Now the heading and the subheading both need to be the same serif font. So we select the heading and the subheading. A serif font, we could choose American Typewriter. That's a serif font because you can see on the end of each letter there's a little line. The subheading, to distinguish it from the heading, needs to be 14 points. And italic. And it doesn't say anything about it being underlined, so let's remove the underlining from the subheading. Now, we need to find a paragraph that starts the current sales team. Here it is, the current sales team. The very last paragraph in the document. So let's select this entire paragraph. And we're going to want to move this so that it becomes the second paragraph, so up here just before the table. So if we click and drag all the way up, we can drop it here. And let's just make sure there's a, a line between this first and second paragraph. Now we need to find the bulleted list. This is the one. We can select the list and it needs to be a numbered list. So instead of a bulleted list it's a numbered list. Now for some reason my document is tracking changes. I need to, I need to turn off track changes so I can go to tools track changes, highlight changes, and deselect all of these. So if you ever have this problem, that's what you do. Now we need to find the style sheet section. Here's, some st Here's a style sheet. And we need to change this according to the instructions. So this heading 3 style needs amending to change the colour to black. So here the colour is a certain hexadecimal code, we want a new hexadecimal code for black. To help us do these, if we can't re remember our CSS, we can uh, go online and use the CSS Mate CSS editor. So here it is. Um, so if we want to make the font black, well we can use this to um, let's choose black. But we want the hexadecimal code, so we can go to the web palace, click on black, and here we can see the code for black. Six zeros. So now I can go back to the word document. Heading 3, need to change this to 6 zeros. Zero, 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 zero. Next, the paragraph style needs to have 11 point font. So, how do we do that? Size needs to be 11 point. So, looking at the CSS code, we need to say font size 11 pt. I can copy that part of the CSS code and I can insert it on the end of the paragraph style. 
Okay, but remembering that each each um, attribute is separated by a semicolon. So I've inserted a semicolon and then pasting the font size 11 point. And I've removed the extra semicolon at the end, although I could leave it there. It doesn't actually matter. Heading 3 needs to be bold. Let's go back to CSS, mate. How do we do bold? That's font weight. So again, I can copy, copy font weight, bold. Heading three. So on the end of, the end of heading three, semi, another semicolon, and paste the code for a bold font. And the last one. Amend the style for paragraphs so that it will accept any generic sans serif font. So looking at the paragraph settings, font family, here are two font families given, but if these happen not to be available on a particular computer or in, in a particular browser, we need to make sure that it, can st it will still display a sans serif font. So CSS may, may be able to help us here, let's have a look. Font family, we want to say Sans serif font. So I just need to add this on the end of this comma separated list. So three font families all available. <coughs> So the instructions. And we want to find the table. There's only one table, here it is. We want to insert a new column to the left of the surname column. So if you hover the mouse pointer just above the table, it's quite difficult to get it right, but you need to see this downwards pointing icon. Then we right click insert columns and here's our new column. So I just need to enter the data now I want to delete the sixth row from the table I want to delete O'Keefe so place the mouse pointer so that it's this rightwards pointing arrow right click delete rows delete the third column one two three four name so again, we want the downwards pointing pointer, right click, delete column. Now, the table is visible, if there's no text wrapping and it fits within the column, so that's fine. Now, we want an image of a pen or pencil at the top of the left column on page 3. So this is the location, let's click here. Insert clip art, clip art gallery. Let's say, do we have a pen? Here's a pen, that will do. Click on it, insert. Now the image needs to be resized so that it fills the column width. It doesn't quite fill, so if we click and drag in the bottom right hand corner, we can widen it to the column width. The aspect ratio is maintained, that's fine. I didn't I didn't drag here, that would have changed the aspect ratio. You always need to drag in the corners if you want to maintain the aspect ratio. And the text wraps below the image, that's fine. The text starts down here. And it looks something like that. So that's the end of the uh, word section.